I grew up in the Air Force and uh, we moved every year. I was always the new kid at school. And I had just a strong imagination because of that. I think not always having friends helped me to kind of live in my imagination. And I think when I was about 11 years old, um, I realized I wanted to be a writer when I wrote a poem about the Vietnam War. And uh, my dad had served in Vietnam, and I just wrote it from the perspective of a child who had a brother there. And it was really a story. It was a short story in poetic form. And my mother sent it into the newspaper, and it got published. And from that moment on, I, I said, I want to be a writer. Uh, everything in my life was geared toward writing after that. I got involved in a, a writer's group and um, people in that group were actually publishing and at the time they were publishing in the romance industry. So I thought I would try that. I like writing about relationships so that was uh, a good fit for me at the time and I learned the craft but I also learned the business and I was able to sell um, my first book when I was about 24 and it came out when I was 25. And um, from then on, I was writing for three publishers in the secular market. And when I went into that market, I really, I was a Christian, and I didn't want to write the sexual, sensual scenes that um, people expect with romance novels. So I thought I was going to write with a Christian conscience and write clean love stories. What happened is over time, and in the interest of fame and fortune, I started adding things to make the book sell better. And um, eventually I was writing things that the other writers were doing. I was putting more sex and, and profanity in the books. And it really took a toll on my spiritual life. And I literally was under such conviction that I got down on my knees and repented and asked God to just help me. And I didn't think I would ever be able to sell a book again after that. I thought, you know, I want to write to glorify God. But I didn't even know there was a Christian market at that time. So um, I set out to research the market and find out about Christian publishers and wound up through a series of real God events. Um, wound up being able to sell to Zondervan. When I started writing Suspense, I wanted to do something different than what I was seeing in the Christian market. Um, the only suspenseful books at the time were books that had preachers in crisis, you know, that kind of thing, or missionaries in crisis. And I wanted to write about ordinary people in crisis. So uh, that's kind of what I've done all along. So suspense has been a really good genre for me. I've just really enjoyed it. It's, I have a short attention span, so I have to have something happening on every page. It really helps me. <laughs> I got the idea for Truth Stained Lies when I was watching the Casey Anthony trial. And um, I, w I started reading some investigative blogs by people who were, you know, digging for information and they were uh, judging what was going on in the trial. And I got real interested in that. But I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if someone turned the tables on one of these bloggers and said, um, you've been speculating and judging others for so long, let's, let's see what happens when they're judging you. She'd given up her job in the district attorney's office and set to work writing about the cases that captured her attention, exposing the killers who spun their stories and manipulated the jurors. She was no longer constrained by suppressed evidence or gag orders. Over the two years that she'd been doing this, she'd gotten several death threats. None of them had resulted in any attempts on her life. This one was probably just another scare tactic. When two million people followed your blog, a few of them were bound to be crazies. But she wouldn't let some cryptic note ruin her day. She had a blog to write. She'd worry about it later.
No other book other than my Bible has had such a profound impact on me. I read all of my books over and over again, but this one is the one I read again when I want to remember and have a deeper understanding of the incredible reality of the covenant we have with God through Christ Jesus. This is the one I use to help others better understand our covenant with God. I cannot even put in words how this book has impacted me. Such a depth of love and commitment by our God, realizing how helpless we are without Him, willingly and lovingly forgiving and drawing us back to Him over and over again, giving us all He is and all He has to get us back, even when we do not live up to our part. I get a lot of letters from readers um, telling me how the books have impacted their lives and it's just always such an honor to hear that. What I've been able to see is that God's been able to transform lives through what I have written, which is just astonishing to me because I'm not that smart and that gifted to be able to touch lives like that. but. You know, the Holy Spirit works through those books for those individual people. And um, through that, He just shows them that He loves them and He's there for them. And so that, that's what my goal is, is to write heartfelt fiction that um, God can use.